Hey everyone, it is Rachel Terrell and I am the campaign manager of the Give Campaign and we are recording this information session for those of you who may not be able to attend a live session. Um, this is going to be informative both about who we are as Give and all the different elements of the campaign for those of you who are new and for those of you who are returning, we're going to outline what is new this year. So, Thank you for watching. We're going to go over what GIVE is, what is required of our participants, what you can expect from us if you participate, and then some of the specifics of applying to the GIVE campaign. So since 2009, when GIVE was founded, GIVE has helped 255 unique local nonprofits raise more than $17.5 million from over 120,000 donations. Last year, GIVE helped 74 local nonprofits raise $1.2 million from over 5,000 donations. Our mission is to inspire local philanthropy in fun, fresh, and innovative ways that allow capacity building in local nonprofits. So we're kind of dual focused. We want to really engage with our community and get them to give back to nonprofits that are making our community better for us all. But then we want to do that by allowing our local nonprofits whose missions we really believe in to build capacity, both in fundraising and marketing. We call ourselves a promotional and fundraising year end platform for local nonprofits in the Pikes Peak region. And we launch our fundraising campaign launches November 1st and runs through December 31st. And we call ourselves a platform because we are all of these things that you see here, but we're not just one of those. So we are not only about fundraising. Um, we are not just a grant program, though we do require each of our participants to um, secure a matching grant on their own, but we also, just by being part of the Give campaign, your nonprofit is sent to some local foundations that choose nonprofits every year that are in the Give campaign to give matching grants to. We are not just a marketing plan, but our connections with local media partners and local philanthropic businesses and sponsors really helps widen the exposure of the nonprofits that participate in Give. And we're more than just a catalog, but our giving site that is live from November 1st through December 31st does act as a sort of digital catalog for year-end donors in our community who are looking for a place that is centralized to vetted nonprofits that are local to their community that are worthy of their support. So in that way, donors in our community know if they have year-end gifts that they're looking to uh, invest in their community, they're gonna look at our website for those. Um, we are more than just an incentive program, but because we work things in like our partnerships with reward partners who are local businesses who give free goods and services to donors who give at different levels, uh, that donate to the nonprofits in the Give campaign. This does incentivize giving, um, incentivize do donors to give through the campaign because they are getting some free perks in return. And then we're more than just a media platform, but we do use our brand to push out your stories, to share about your missions and the work that you're doing so that the people in our community know about your work and want to support it. Our objectives, like I kind of stated, are to widen your exposure. So we really want to get the word out through our media partners, through our connections about what you're doing. We want to help you raise funds. That's a huge part, obviously, especially in November and December, is we want to help you meet your goals for those year-end gifts from our public donations. And we want to do both of these things to increase the capacity because 
we know that you most likely work for a nonprofit, not because you are super passionate about fundraising, but because you're passionate about your mission. But we all know that fundraising is what powers you, uh, powers your mission. And so it is necessary. And so we want to help train you. We want to help create the infrastructure for you to get access to those resources that you need to fulfill your mission. So if that all sounds good to you, now that you know who we are, we want to kind of outline what you gain from being a part of the gift campaign. So you gain promotion. Um, we have media partners like KRCC, like Fox 21 News, uh, different podcasters that will feature our nonprofits during the campaign. And so through that promotion, your, your exposure is widened. We give you training from July through September on different elements of the campaign that you're going to need to be sufficient and excellent in. But the awesome thing is that this training also applies to fundraising um, or or marketing that happens even outside of the campaign. So that training is beneficial to you in and outside of the campaign. You are eligible for matching grants and you are responsible for securing a matching grant. And the reason that we do this is because studies show that this really increases uh, incentive and excitement and enthusiasm and donors give more when there is a matching grant. So that's why that is a vital part of the Give campaign. We also use friendly competitions to incentivize those donors who are more competitive. And so these are uh, sponsored by different entities in the community. And so this also helps motivate donors who want their nonprofit to win to give more um, so that they win those friendly competitions. And then we offer networking and collaboration with other organizations. And um, we know that a lot of gatherings can kind of have the, the branding of networking, um, but we are specifically looking to get different entities in the room, different organizations in the room that are facing similar obstacles because we're all local to our community. We are all entrenched in our community. We know our community. And so uh, again and again, year after year, Nonprofits tell us that that's part of the most valuable aspect of the campaign is really having those opportunities to troubleshoot, to brainstorm, to share about what we're all facing so we can make each other better. And the one of the goals of the Give campaign is that through our uh, giving platform, our website during the campaign is that you are getting access to new donors. So we talk about being stronger together in the campaign because if uh, all breed rescue and training is promoting their participation in the give campaign and, and they have a, a donor who really cares about them, they're going to drive traffic to givepikespeak.org. But while that donor is there, they're going to give their gift to All Breed Training and Rescue, but they're also going to see all of the other nonprofits that are in that animal category, and they're going to want to give to those unique nonprofits who uh, also are caring for animals, but maybe in different ways, filling different gaps in our community. And so it's really important that we all promote the campaign together because that's how we get access to new donors. And we like to kind of talk about fundraising as double bouncing. So some of the things that you're going to be required to do in the Give campaign, you're likely already doing fundraising for your own nonprofit. So you probably or hopefully are marketing yourself on social media, right? But with the gift campaign, if you tag us in your social media posts, we are also going to promote you on our page. So now it's not only your followers who sees that content, it's also our followers. And so that's kind of what we talk about with all aspects of the campaign is that this is fundraising that double bounces. So you uh, could be doing that on your own and you reach a certain audience. But then when you're part of the gift campaign, those same actions go twice as far because we are promoting you as well. For those of you who are returning, we're very excited to share uh, some of the new elements this year. So every year after the campaign, we send out a survey to our participants because we want to get their 
their kind of story of their experience in the campaign. We want to hear their suggestions. We want to make improvements because we really exist for you. And so we want to serve you the absolute best that we can. And so we want to hear from you. So based on the feedback from last year, we are making these improvements. So a big pain point last year was after nonprofits secure their matching grants and fill in their agreement form, then the matching grantors have to pay those matching grants. And so that we were having a really hard time communicating with nonprofits, which of their matching grantors had paid or not along the way. And so this year, nothing, no extra work is being added to the nonprofits, which is why we're super excited about this solution. In the past, um, once you secured a matching grantor, you would fill out a Google form on their behalf with their information, um, their contact information, and what they wanted specifically published on your Give profile on the giving site. And so this year, you'll still fill out that form, but instead that form will be interfaced with our website so that when that matching grant is paid, it is automatically uploaded to the website and goes onto your profile. So that all nonprofits have to do to know if matching grantors have paid their matching grants or not is if that name is listed on their profile, then they know we have received that matching grant money. And so another exciting part of that is that we will be accepting those matching grant payments through ACH, so electronically this year, as well as checks. So if that form is filled out and the information is given for that electronic payment, it will automatically be uploaded to the website. And when that form is filled out and then um, the check is sent in, all of that is all of that information is uploaded to the back end of the website and kind of waiting there. And when our bookkeepers receive that check in the mail and they process that, all they have to do is log into the back end, check it off, and then it's automatically uploaded to the profile. So it makes um, tracking a lot easier for nonprofits. It um, kind of streamlines the work for our staff so that we can be more efficient and effective in this area. So we're super excited about that. But kind of on the same note, we are working to update donation methods for the public donors. So on the checkout page, we are looking to have um, some pre-filled options, some quicker options for donors to fill out that checkout page so it's less monotonous, so there's less room for interruptions um, so that those can kind of be automatically uploaded instead of donors having to put in their card number and all of that information. And so we are really hoping that this will increase the amount of donations because it will be quicker and more efficient especially for our younger donors. They're used to this efficiency in technology. And a lot of times that's an obstacle to them giving is if it takes too long. And so we're really hoping that this will also increase giving with that younger demographic. So we're really excited to share that, those new elements this year. So if you're still with us and all of that sounds good and beneficial to your organization, let's talk about what you need to be eligible to be a participant in the GIVE campaign. So you must be recognized as a 501c3 nonprofit or have a 501c3 as a fiscal sponsor. And we do ask for the documentation and the application to prove that. All of the funds that are raised in the GIVE campaign must support services in the Pikes Peak region. And so here at the GIVE campaign, we consider the Pikes Peak region, El Paso and Teller counties. So what this means is you can be a nationwide nonprofit, but the money that's raised in the GIVE campaign has to stay in the local branch in our community. You have to be able to demonstrate financial integrity. And what we mean by this, um, is beyond just ethics, is that the Give campaign can't be your main source of income. So it can be one of your main sources. Uh, there are lots of nonprofits that raise hefty amounts in the Give campaign. So that is a big portion of their budget. But we want to see that you maybe participate in other fundraising campaigns, that you have monthly or annual donors, that you have events that raise money for you, um, because we, as the Give Campaign, are vouching for your viability to the community. And so we need to be able to see that. And then another non-negotiable is we need to see that you enforce a diversity and non-discrimination policy comparable to the one used by the Give Campaign. And so in the application, there is a link to the Give Campaign's non-discrimination policy as an example. 
Um, but there's also a checklist of what we're looking for specifically. And so I'm mentioning sexual orientation and gender identity because often these are ones that can be left out, but they are very important and what we want to see on those policies. And so our reviewers who review the applications, they don't skip this, they will read each of your policies. And so it's really important that you include that from the get go. So if you're eligible, now it's time to ask if give is the right fit for you. So we want to know that you have the capacity. We're asking that you have two people, they could be staff members, they could be volunteers, who can commit 10 hours each a month to the give campaign June through December. We are asking that you have the ability and the willingness to secure a matching grant. And so it might be scary to ask for support, but really using the Give campaign, sharing the story of, of the benefits of the Give campaign and why you're participating um, is, a, is a way to ask people for that matching grant. And we do have a training. That's our first training is how to ask for that matching grant. So if it's scary, that's okay. We're going to help you, but we need to know that you're willing to do that since that is a required element of the campaign. And then we wanna know that you can implement best practices in donor care. So we're hoping that you're gonna gain new donors through the GIVE campaign and the community is trusting us to vouch for you. And so we need to make sure that you can take care of those new donors. You can send them a prompt thank you note. You can communicate uh, with them through newsletters, emails, phone calls, uh, and that you can ask them to engage with your, your mission because that's all part of good donor care. And then we want to know that you can fully participate in the network in training opportunities that are offered. So there's only three required events at the Give campaign, but there's lots of optional ones. And we want to see that you attend at least a few of those because those are really valuable based on the feedback we receive from nonprofits. They say that those are really valuable. And so we need to know that you're not just going to do the minimum, that you are going to show up at some of those meet and greets, that you're going to attend those trainings because those are going to directly affect your success in the campaign. Um, and so maybe those requirements seem a little daunting, but here's a reminder about why it's worth it. So we are free to apply. So there's no harm in applying. And we mentioned this because there are a lot of fundraising campaigns where it's not free to apply. And so um, we do want to highlight that. We do have a $1,500 guarantee. So if you raise less than $1,500 combined between the matching grant that you secure and the public donations from November 1st through December 31st, if you have fully participated and met the deadlines, we will pay the difference. And as you can see, the participation fee is 800 for new participants and 1250 for returning participants. So uh, you will gain at least $250 more than that upfront cost. Uh, but that fee does help uh, the Give campaign continue to offer this benefit to the community. Um, we are giving you access to the opportunity to have thousands of dollars worth of free airtime that our media partners donate annually to the Give campaign. So what that looks like is you will be required to submit a media pitch, and this is your best storytelling, your best images, your best videos um, to compel those media partners to pick your media pitch, to pick your nonprofit for their media spots during the Give campaign. And so this is competitive. And so you wanna do your very best work with that media pitch. Um, we wanna be upfront that there is an administrative fee of 3.5% uh, collected on all donations that are collected through the Give campaign. This isn't new, this is very standard, but we just wanna be upfront about that. Um, and we are asking for that time investment of two liaisons um, who are gonna commit 10 hours per month from June through December to the Give campaign. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about what that means specifically. Um, but uh, an investment, uh, excuse me, um, a pro, a uh, asset of participating in the campaign is that this fundraising structure and calendar and these, these deadlines um, would cost a lot of hours of labor and thought 
in planning if your staff or your volunteers were to do this on their own, but we are, we are providing this for you and we know that it works. And so that's a huge benefit uh, of participating in the Give campaign. So those two liaisons who are each committing to up to 10 hours a month um, to engaging your nonprofit with the Give campaign, they are reading our Give weekly newsletters that we send out. They are attending the three uh, required events and they're entering timely submissions of the media pitch, of your Give online profile proofs, those kinds of things. And they're also attending some of those optional trainings. Um, so our required our events are our welcome orientation, which is at the end of June, our website walkthrough, which is walking us through the giving site, communicating how each element is there to help you raise more money and to explain any and explore any element that's new this year that's required. And that's um, in the mid to end of October. And then our award ceremony is in February. And that's when you receive the check with the money that you've raised in the Give campaign. And then from July through September, uh, we have optional training workshops um, and meet and greets for those networking opportunities. And then during the campaign, we really encourage promotional events, uh, collaborative events between nonprofits in the campaign, which will really increase awareness and excitement around your participation in the Give campaign. Our required submissions are our digital media app assessment. And that is just kind of giving us a baseline of where you're starting as far as your digital media. And then um, hopefully we're seeing that increase and um, be more beneficial towards you by the end of the campaign. The Give Guide profile edits, uh, we wanna make sure all of that information is correct and compelling for when the campaign goes live and the public is reading all of that information on your nonprofit. The matching pledge agreements and payments, um, the media pitch, which we compile that list and we send them to all our media partners for them to pick. The friendly competition entries, um, some of those you are automatically just enrolled in and some of them are optional that you have to apply for. And then the event and social media promotion, which um, because we really wanna engage with donors who are 36 years and younger, we will continue to kind of robustly make our social media promotion part of the Give Campaign requirements. And then securing that matching grant of at least $1,000 is part of the requirement as well. Um, a note on the matching grants is these can be from a single or collective donor that agrees to match the total donation of $1,000 or more. So um, it can be a single person or you can have several people who are giving $200. It could be your board of directors, uh, a group of maybe 10, and each person is going to give $100 and collectively they make up that $1,000. It could be a business sponsor. This can look a lot of ways, but we need um, that to add up to $1,000. Um, and we do this again because it is an evidence-based evidence way of raising more money. Um, and just by being a part of the Give campaign, you might be selected for a matching grant uh, that is given from the El Pomar Foundation or the Bloom Foundation here in Colorado Springs. Um, but we, we encourage you not to rely on that. Uh, you need to find your own and secure your own. But the great part about that is, is those who have more matching grants generally raise more money. So if you receive one of those matching grants, it's only going to help you in the live campaign. So now getting a little bit more specific into our application. So uh, linked in our application, there is uh, a link to the form that will be used by the review committee um, to kind of score your application and then make their recommendations to our board of directors who has the final say on who is selected. Um, but they are looking for meaningful impact and that you can clearly communicate that. We're looking for exceptional prog projects. We get excited about small organizations who need seed money to start or maybe have less access to fundraising campaigns. We seek to engage all community members um, and often 
the 36 and under demographic is kind of overlooked. And so we want to engage with them. So if you have 36 and under appeal, as in you're in the places where young people are, you're on social media, um, we get excited about that. And then the non-discrimination policy, as we talked about, is just a non-negotiable. Um, for those of you who are returning, we are looking at your previous participation, your involvement with the campaign, and that you play well with others, that you don't cause problems for staff or for other nonprofits. Um, and we just wanna highlight that we are here to give you the exposure and the tools and the opportunities to be successful, but you are responsible for your own su success in the campaign. You are responsible for using those opportunities and tools to the fullest. And year after year, we see that those participants who don't rely solely on the Give campaign to provide all their visibility will be the ones that raise the most money. Uh, these dates are included in the application, so you don't need to write them down. Um, you will have access to them over and over again. Um, but our campaign or our application launched on Monday, March 17th, and will close April 17th. And just a plug, the sooner you get your application in, the sooner the staff can review it. And if there's any missing pieces or anything that is maybe the wrong document, we can get back to you, ask you for a new submission before we send that to the review committee. So we have less time to do that the later you wait. So we really encourage you to apply early. Um, and you can expect to hear if you have been selected to be in the campaign um, around May 22nd. And that gives you plenty of time to make your decision on if you want to participate and get that um, participation agreement filled out and the fee paid by our welcome orientation, which is on June 22nd. Um, and that's one of the required events, as well as this website walkthrough, which is also a required event, which is an, on October 17th, um, sorry, 19th. The live campaign will launch on November 1st, and then we have our launch party at Bristol Brewing on November 10th. And this isn't a required event, but we really encourage you to be there because not only are the participants in the campaign invited, but our media partners, our reward partners, our sponsors are also invited. And so these are local entities and businesses who are already philanthropic. And so you wanna be in the room with them to make connections because that connection, that partnership could be taken even further for the benefit of your nonprofit. And so you really wanna be in the room with those people. We say that our campaign soft closes on December 31st, but we do extend that for three more days into January 3rd because there are donors who want to wait and give into the new year um, because of tax purposes. And this also provides an opportunity for that final um, flash sale, that final push. And uh, you can say to your community, hey, if you didn't hear or you forgot or you ran out of time to give, the campaign has been extended three more days and we really do see so many donations come in in those last three days. So definitely use that opportunity to make that final push to your community. And then our award ceremony will be on February 1st this year. And that is a required event because that is where you get your money that you raised in the campaign. So that's a really super exciting and fun ceremony where we just celebrate together. Um, you don't have to write any of these things down um, because you will see these again, but just for an overview, your participation agreement and your fee are due on that welcome orientation in June. Our training workshops will be every other week from July through September. And then in August, we're gonna send out an ask for you to tell us if anything changed for you between when you applied and now, um, as far as what we should put on your profile. And then those matching grant agreements are due on September 1st. So we need you to have secured that matching grant by then. Um, and then in September, we're going to ask you to revise your give profile. Um, we're going to take all that information from your application and any revisions you told us about in August. We're going to upload that. You're going to look that over. If any uh, edits need to be made, you're going to tell us. You're going to give us some time to do that. You're going to look it over again. And that way we make sure that that's all set to go by October. Media pitches 
which we will have trainings on, um, will be due in September. And that gives our media partners a month, a month and a half to review those and make their selections of which nonprofits they're going to highlight in their media spots during the campaign. And then matching grant payments will be due by the end of September. And so if there's any special exceptions, um, that gives us the month of October to really get, uh, get those all in so that by November 1st, all of our matching grants payments are in and all of those names are published to your profile for the public to see. All right, so specifically um, on the application, you have to apply online at givepikespeak.org slash application. Um, and there is a checklist linked there in that application of all the different elements you're gonna need to collect um, for that application. So what we would recommend is before you dive into the online application, look up that checklist, gather all those items, then sit down at the application, read through all of the content that's at the beginning before you start answering questions. Um, because that's gonna tell you two very important things. Uh, first, that there is a save and continue feature, so you do not have to fill out the application all in one sitting, but the save and continue feature does not save attachments. So you've collected all those attachments, all that supporting documentation based on your checklist, but don't attach any of that until you are ready to submit, until you've, you've answered all of those questions because they won't be saved. Which brings us to the character count limits. Um, there are character count limits in the essay kind of questions. And so we would recommend you typing up your answer to those questions in Word or Google Docs and making sure that you have that set to not word count, but character count. So you make sure that your messaging is all clear and concise and will fit into that application. Then copy and paste all of that over, then do all your, attach all of your documentations and then submit. When you use that save and continue feature, it's gonna, um, ask you for an email address, please make sure, double check, triple check that you put the right email address in there. And if you don't see that email, please check your spam folder because the email could not be recognized and could be sent to spam. And when you find that email, it should include a link, which will, if you click on that, will bring you to your drafted application. So those are kind of the key tips about the application. Those you can be reminded of. They are included in the online application, but we wanted to make sure to explain all of that here. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of our wrap up, but we are here for you. So please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. You can always call us or email us and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. So thank you for your interest in the Give campaign. We hope that it sounds like the right fit for you, that you have the capacity and that you choose to apply sooner rather than later. Thanks so much.